I'm Tom Duplinski. I'm an assistant clinical professor at Yale University School of Medicine, and I also teach in the residency program at Yale Haven Hospital. In 1993, I became connected with the International Academy of Rheumatology and Toxicology, and they were an organization that was new at the time that were interested in the effects of mercury, because mercury being a known uh, neurotoxin, they were concerned that this was a problem in dentistry. At the time, I was concerned because uh, several uh, colleagues had become uh, mercury poisoned from practices they, they purchased. And I knew that uh, this could probably be a, an occupational risk because, um, uh, for instance, one, one person I know bought a practice and was completely fine and then had neurological defects. And then later studies showed that uh, he had became mercury poisoned from the practice environment that he had bought because the previous dentist was not very good with mercury hygiene and there was mercury contamination in the entire office. And it was bad mercury hygiene is what I thought. But later my exposure to the organization and scientific studies, so based on science, it became quite clear that uh, mercury was constantly leaking from restorations and poisoning the patients and also was at a risk, high risk for de the dentists themselves. No, the problem is is that uh, the average dentist is really not aware of the risk, and um, the study, the current study that I had, is even bring brought things to light, even for myself, that the risk is pretty significant, and most people are are not aware of the risk and feel that while there's some minor mercury, that it's it's not a big deal for their health. So that's why I originally designed this study is to actually see how. Uh, mercury affects the health of dentists. We just published a study on the health of dentists and this looked at basically um, actual insurance utilization data to see what type of medical issues dentists had compared to controls. Basically uh, previous studies looked at surveys or they've looked at mortality studies and a lot of the data that people feel that uh, dentists are as healthy as or healthier than the um, average uh, person or the, the general population um, is, is based on these and there are flaws basically in a number of these studies. Previous studies may be um, are just surveys of what the dentists think is going on. So that's another flawed aspect is um, you're asking someone to tell you what their health status is when that is, is basically it's purely subjective. And our contention certainly after the study is that Dentists may live slightly longer, but they may not be healthier than the general population. And the reason they can actually uh, may have had a longer lifespan is because they had the finances and the means to get medical care, whereas the general population may not. So we wanted to actually look for a uh, a method that would be able to actually look at what really was happening with the health of dentists. And the best way to look at that is look at their actual. Uh, medical claims to what they're actually being treated for. And this is fairly unique that we were able to, to do this study and we um, were able to get uh, you know, permission to look at uh, you know, 600 dentists and um, controls that were actually um, matched for the entire, their whole insurance plan, location, even many of them have the same physicians. So the care was equal. So let's look at a population and, and equally look at, uh, um, you know, they had equal access to care, and let's see what the, the uh, problems that they have compared to the general population. It had several uh, categories. We had neurological, psychiatric, cardiac, and respiratory. It's the, the four categories we looked at in this population and compared them to controls, looking at uh, actual claims data. So we were able to look at that, and uh, the findings were pretty significant that showed that the dentists were not as healthy as the general population or our controls. The neurological conditions they were suffering from were 7.6 times higher than the general population. And in psychiatric, it was 2.4 times the general population. And this, this uh, makes sense because we're looking at mercury, and mercury is a strong neurotoxin. So it's not surprising that if you have a higher body burden of mercury that you would have more health problems and we showed that to be true. So the science is there that mercury is leaking out of the fillings 
your body's accumulating mercury, and the disconnect is between the science and the opposition who says, yeah, well, it leaks it throughout the body, but it doesn't cause any disease. But the problem with mercury is that there's a whole spectrum of diseases, so it's not one thing. And it, the same person may be exposed to the same amount and be as, um, has a body burden that in one person will cause ill effects and the other person they may be resistant to it. So it's, it's very, um, you know, as far as linking a disease, it's very hard to, to, to link a, a disease. But um, the fact that mercury is leaking out of these fillings and accumulating in parts of your body is reason enough not to use it.